I'm delighted to introduce you to a member of Astana, Eamon Coleman, who's going to take you through the work and just respond in, in your own way and just take the journey from there, I guess. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Um, I'm delighted to be here for two reasons. One, for this amazing exhibition, but also in a, a previous life, I knew Shane Sennis very well. And uh, we, I ran a club, a traditional music club in Stotteries in Cable Street, and Shane used to come in and, and play, and I would uh, inevitably end up in his mobile home out uh, here and uh, drink far more than we should ever. <laughs> um, but Seamus left me his photographs, Mr. Whaley left me his photographs of his collected dancing at the crossroads, and all of that sort of thing, which I in turn left to the to the National Folklore Commission uh, collection. So they're all in the National Folklore Co collection at the moment. And if you wanted to go in and see them, just go in and ask to be, and they'll show them to you. And they're the most extraordinary photographs um, uh, of Ireland. And uh, it's amazing how much of Ireland hasn't changed, actually, yeah. which is quite extraordinary. Anyway, to 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 talk about these paintings. Um, I walked in here this afternoon and I was immediately reminded of a, a poem by a, uh, a well-known, probably all of you would have heard of him, I won't mention his name until anybody asked me. Um, uh, he was a well-known LA rock musician who wrote a, a, a poem which goes like this. Words be nimble, words be quick, words resemble walking sticks. Plant them, watch them grow, and watch them waver so. And I think it's a beautiful metaphor for these paintings because they are planted ideas that take on a journey of their own as they're being made. And one of the things that I think is really interesting about the way Deirdre works is you can see her process, her, her almost her leaning forward and her coming back from the canvas or the, the, the paper that she's working on, which is a really interesting way of for us, the observer, to observe the, the process of making, especially an abstract painting, because abstract paintings are the, there, there, there are two things that are really hard to do. One is to start and when to know how to finish. They're the two really hardest things in an abstract painting. When you're doing something figurative, it is, it is much easier to know, hang on, when do I finish? How do I, how do I, how do, how do I finish this painting? But in an abstract um, painting, it's almost as if you have to turn them away and let them stop talking to you for a while before you know that they're done. Um, uh, Derby's work reminds me of, and I've talked about this in the essay, of the process of map making. And I think what is really interesting about, about um, uh, the idea of, of an abstract piece of work that is um, uh, topographical to a certain extent. And, and uh, the Derva, Derva, in a way, flies over her landscapes looking down. She's the kind of the drone, if you like, looking over the landscapes to look down on, on a picture plane that is both um, eroded and added to as, she, as she, she works through it. And you can see that, as I say again in the process, you can see how she is, you know, erasing some of the Things, but doesn't erase those marks completely. So they become like a weathered landscape or a weathered um, uh, um, uh, map. And I was thinking when I, when I saw these first, uh, they immediately reminded me of, of those old Victorian um, maps from the, the, the 19th, 20th century, where you know, nobody quite knew what the shape of Ireland was. It was kind of, you know, what it was. It was and then, and then slowly but surely they started to get more and more confident in how they were how they were they were they were looking at the the the, the I 
of the contours of the land. And you can see this happening, and, 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 and there are sometimes in, in Der and I, I'm going to do a walk around, there are sometimes in Derby's paintings that I will, I, I'm, I'm taking this talk and I've done the essay from my personal response to the paintings. And I firmly believe that as she got to know the subject better, she paired back more and more and more and more. And there are some paintings outside, especially where less is more in the paintings. And I find that really interesting as a process of, of looking around, you start to see the journey that she has made through these landscapes. Um, uh, I wanted, I wanted to, to, to start, I, I'm, I'm going to start with, I'm going to pick out three paintings in this room, and I'm going to pick out four or five paintings in the other room. Um, this one in particular here is one that I'm, I'm, I'm very much drawn to. Um, I, it is, it is without doubt, this is a map, but it is also a map made with, with two things. One is with, with full knowledge of what she is doing. She has full knowledge of the marks and the thing. And then there is this childlike naivety that is included in the process of making the paintings. Um, uh, I think one of the things that is really interesting is the um, the marks underneath the the paintings. And if you look at, for instance, if you look at um, uh, um, contemporary photographs of where they believe the the city of Alexandria was, where you see the, the these these marks underneath the water that are, are, are barely visible, but they're there. So they've been, they've been erased. And, and Derby uses color in order to do this, but then balances it with the neutral, like that gray sweet, boom, just very quickly done, done with a squeegee, I presume, not a brush, Many which is interesting, which, which, which is, um, uh, um, gives the, the paint uh, a flat, surface and then using a, 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 a tool to create those textures on it. So it becomes very much a, a work in, in, in how a landscape oh, grows and erodes, grows and erodes, grows and erodes. And, and that is constantly what she's doing as she's making the paintings. Um, uh, I love that, that it's almost like a, a harbour of, of yellow, that shape, which um, uh, in turn embraces these quite rigorous marks, which are, are, are if, if you think about them like, like uh, streets, roads that are, that are, that are underneath something, not, not quite there at all. And um, this to me is a beautiful, beautiful painting. Uh, um, and I, what I love about it is, is that when you're using acrylics, in oil painting, it is really easy to glaze. Oil painting is very easy to glaze on. It, it, it naturally lends itself to it. Acrylic paint doesn't. So in order to get those glazes, and she is getting all of that, that, that um, uh, red, rose, rose red that she has here, with all of those little marks underneath it popping through, the blues and the pinks coming through. It's just beautiful. They're just, it's a stunning, stunning painting. Um, great. The other one I wanted to talk about because of its texture is this one here. But also there are, are, are interesting things in this, in this painting in that um, this, to me, uh, Derda grew up in, in, in Clare. Clare is probably still our most, most ancient county left in Ireland, you know, it's the one that has been least disrupted. And here, if you look at this, you get all of these, these are almost like Celtic um, uh, stone forts, you know, the, those, those round fort fortifications that you find in the landscape. Here is this that is very much reminiscent of, of a, a, a stone hut, you know, a monk's hut that you might find within the landscape. Um, but what is really interesting about this painting is that, that, that uh, she is using um, wax as a texture 
within the paint. But the paint is, but a lot of people when they're using wax uh, and the cold wax process, is it's on the surface, sitting on the surface of the, of the canvas. This, the cold wax, is actually allowed to penetrate into the canvas. It, it becomes another process of layering, of, of, of developing a, a, um, a, a visual language for us, the viewer, to look at. And, and of, of all of these paintings, I say, when you're looking at them, look at them slowly. Don't, don't just stand in front of them, look at them and walk away. And don't stand in front of them and just see colour, because they're a lot more than colour. They have, they have a lot more going on. There's beautiful mark making in this ones that are, are feel random, but are not. Um, uh, there's little, little things happen that she's allowed happen. It's these, see where the, the, the pink here is broken with that, that under black. So she has made this mark. And a lot of people would go ahead and, and kind of fill it all in and make it, try and make it neater. She's just allowed it to sit. And that's a really, uh, for me, that's very exciting to see because what it, what it, again, it creates this visual content for, for, for us, the, the viewer, to look at. You know? um, the last one I want to talk about in, in this room is this little piece here. This is to me the beginning of, of, of uh, Derrida pairing back. She's starting to say less. Is more. I'm not. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to over. You know, complicate the process of what I'm doing. Is and that 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 to me is is all about confidence. Um, uh, and this is a really for me. This is a really interesting painting because um, in 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 everything else in the room. You, you, you don't really make out um, uh, the, the notion, in inverted commas, the notion or idea of buildings or of, of, of um, uh, uh, a vastness. The, the, even the bigger ones are quite tight. They're quite, quite, you know, they're quite small areas that have been blown up big. This is a vast area that's been created small. And that to me is very exciting. I find that really, really exciting. And I would, I would again get you to, to, to know little things like how this, this drops down out of, out of sequence of what is happening on this plane here. This little orange book just drops down. And that's, that, that, that again is something visually very exciting. So, you know, this is what I would ask you to do when you're looking at these paintings. Look at them slowly, start seeing those little nuances, those little, like even in this one here, this little mark here, this, this you know, that she's just, it's like a scribbled line, but it's sort of the line that your kids would draw on the wall, you know, when they're, when they're, when they're children. But this is not a child drawing those, this is an adult, so therefore it has, it has, it has a, a resonance. It brings us back to something and allows us to look at something quite, there's another lovely, lovely one here these little marks that have been then with 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 a squeegee painted over paint rubbed over them again again here look, you can see that circular mark so again look at the painting slowly can we go into the other room and have another this is for me the journey the journey that that um, the dog has gone on and um, I wanted to pick out this, this for me is the best painting in the show. I think it's, it's, it's got something that the others um, uh, are hinting at. And that's what's really interesting about what, if you're looking at a show like this, you can see from, 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 from walking around hints of what is to come. And, and, and all good artists, one of the things that's really, really great about good artists is that they, they're constantly leaving themselves questions in each painting. Because, you know, I mean, you know, this whole notion that I have that I'm, with my own work is that if I was to finish what I consider is my very best painting, I'd go, that's it. I'm done. My job is done. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go off. I'm going to become a gardener or a whatever. I'm not going to be... So, 
you 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 end up with a with a, a series of questions being asked in each of the paintings that I think for this, and I don't know their 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 sequence, I don't know their time. I just know that this for me has the 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 use of colour, the mark making, the 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 kind of you know the country road that is rambling all through the, the, the whole thing here. All all of that has has been hinted at in the other paintings it suddenly finds itself its true voice in this. It's like it's like anybody, you know, a singer songwriter who who who, who is writing good songs and then suddenly one day in ten minutes writes the most perfect song. That's and and I don't I I, I, I don't know, but I, I have a, an idea that this probably came together fairly quickly and she went suddenly went, Oh, that's done. I I'm I'm out of here. I've I've I don't want to touch it. But it left her with a, a kind of good signpost about where I'm going forward, how I'm going, how I'm going to push this 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 painting process forward for the next 10, 20 years, or how long ever, how long she feels like making work for. And um, again, what is really interesting in this is there are two things that are in in some of the paintings inside. I'm sure some of the paintings here. You can see them here. These marks, which she allows continue right through all of the the under mark making. Here, she stops it. They're just hinted at. That mark is just hinted at here. It is not, it is not, she's had the confidence not to say, I'm not going to actually make it as strong or as, 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 as pronounced as I have been in the other ones. And also there is a transparency in the, in the, in the work here that is, that is <coughs> not, it's only been hinted at in some of the other works which is really nice. This here, coming around here, is very, is very beautiful, very subtle, very quick. It was just made in one go and then left. And that takes a huge amount of confidence because, you know, you can, if, you, if you walk into your studio and you want to spend a day in the studio and you, your painting process suddenly pops up something that is really good, and you kind of go, what are we going to do with the rest of the day? <laughs> and and, and your, your tendency is to say, oh, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe it isn't as good as I think it is. So the, the, the best thing to do is to just, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go into town, I'm going to go for coffee, or I'm going, to, I'm going to go to a film. I'm going to do something that will take my mind off my studio practice altogether. And that's one of these paintings that I know she probably did that. She probably made finished it, you know? And I haven't talked to her about it. I, I actually said to, to Deb that I do not want you telling me anything about the paintings. I want to be I want it to be my own response to the paintings. Um, she is also using an uh, oil stick in this, which is lovely. It's just one single mark. Boom. These marks here, just one single mark. Um, that's a that's a, a a painting that I think is is worthy of any major collection. It's just stunning, um, great. Um, the other one I wanted to talk about in here, well, I can't stop talking until I've talked about this painting in particular. This, this is another little gem of a painting. Um, uh, Again, it's topographical. It's about it's about uh, uh, um, landscape mark making. Um, uh, I I in my in the essay that I wrote, I, I referred to Tim Robinson. Tim Robinson is a is a, 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 a I suppose he's a, a human geographer, and he he talks about landscape as as being an eroded and grown on space. And he makes these maps, um, handmade maps of Connemara, or has, has made, sadly he's passed away. But um, uh, Derek's work is very near to what he would talk about in, in, as, a, as a, a landscape format painting. These are not necessarily um, landscapes of, of, 
of knowledge or of you know of looking there are landscapes of the mind the maps of the mind and that to me is quite quite um, uh, beautiful we don't have an art we have a, it, it, it's a big tradition in europe to have artists who are making what they call um, landscapes of the mind or maps of the mind but we don't have that tradition very much in ireland simply because the figurative tradition of painting was the was the the, the dominant um, I suppose art school format <coughs> taught up until the 1960s, 70s in Ireland, and now it's suddenly it's suddenly becoming it, it's probably swung far too more far too more the opposite way. <laughs> um, uh, and one of the things that I think is really important about being a, 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 an abstract artist is that you still draw daily, and I would draw I draw I personally draw from the figure on a regular basis. And, and that's what excites me about, about Derby's work in that she is using the pencil quite a lot in her actual paintings. So it's um, uh, really good. There is one more, this, this, this little one here that I, I, just, I just loved as well. Um, uh, and um, uh, these two, to me, are very much related to each other. Um, uh, Again, if you look at if you look at some of the drawing in, the, in this one, this drawn with the thing, but here it is painted in, which is really nice. And that is again like those those. If you look at at, at um, uh, Ordnance Survey maps of rural Ireland, you will see those those little passages off the main road coming down to a little house that is that has stood there since you know before the famine. And these these marks we refer to here, whereas this is much more childlike. This painting here, it's even got a game of X and O's going on in in, in, the, in the in the in the left of the painting, which is quite quite interesting. Um, uh, and again, she is doing things in this that are I find really exciting. Is this this mark here with the 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 just tailed off at the end of it with a little bit of what I would call the built environment included into the into the painting structure. So um, uh, Derville constantly moves as an artist between um, abstract expressionism and and minimalism. And that 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 that's a really interesting and hard road to 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 follow between um, and she is playing in, in this, she plays a lot with the idea that you find in quite a lot of minimalist paintings. And if you look at, at, at people like early Rothko, um, uh, um, even, even the germ, the, the Russian um, uh, painters who were painting, uh, avant-garde painters who were painting underground um, during Stalin's period, Dervla follows that tradition quite, quite, um, uh, very much has brought it into the 21st century, which is kind of interesting. So I would like to finish by saying, well done, Derbla. Thank you, Edward. Thank you so it's, much. Um, it's a great show. Um, well done to the Shane Center Centre for putting it on. It, 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 it deserves to be seen, um, as does the Shane Center Centre mm -hmm. itself, you know. Um, uh, a, a, a tribute to a great man, but also a tribute to North County Dublin, you know, which is a, a quite an extraordinary area in itself. So, cheers. I'd like you all to raise your glasses. To, cheers. To, cheers. 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 Well done, Thank you very much. Um, I'm not really going to say a whole lot because... I'm not a public speaker and it just scares the hell out of me. But Eamon, everything you said, I 100% back up everything. And I've also learned so much as well. It's it's amazing when people start talking about your work back to you. I, I learned so much from that and I'm excited to start and continue with other paintings as well. Um, I usually like to just let the work speak for themselves to everybody as an individual, whether it's in the colour or the shapes or the mystery that's you know, underneath it or on top of it or, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm just <laughs> overwhelmed by the amount that has come here. And I'm really so grateful for everyone for coming out here. And I'd like to thank Eamon so much for coming and doing this, travelling so far. 
um, support my husband. All of my friends and family, my parents are here. And Seamus Ellis. I know it. Thank you the talk by saying that while you know there has been a whole tradition in Ireland that God in the great you work at your hobby <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is that artists need to survive there are paintings here that will cost you less than a night out in in a good hotel, um, and they will live with you for the rest of your 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 days, and then you can pass them on to your kids. <laughs> and um, and and also, you never know; Jerusalem might become the next big, big, big thing, and that'll become an investment, and you'll be um, uh, you'll be putting your hundred and fifty euros to to good. But I'm sure as well. I I when when I was at Thursday, I had this whole thing of we can always do terms. So you know, what 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 would be a few nights in the pub in 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 a month would buy you a painting. So you know, two two or three months of paying off for a painting would get you would get you a painting. So um, really, genuinely consider it. So cheers. Cheers. Welcome,